case takes in single phase power and produces three phase power with some power quality problems included. Before using the case you should consult the user's manual because there's some settings that must be specifically made for the voltage and frequency of your region. The switch settings for setting voltage and frequency can be accessed underneath this panel. The single phase power is applied using a power cord. There's a switch which you can turn the demo case on and off with. This area of the demo box has the controls for voltage and current. These are split into three separate areas. The first area is the voltage controls. Here the voltage can be adjusted up or down based upon the input voltage to the demo box. For best results, turn these to about 50% so that the white line is facing upwards. The second button above the voltage control is the interruption button so you can create power quality dips. The second set of controls are for the current. Here we can adjust the current magnitude. That's how many amps are displayed on the instrument. Again, when you first start, put the knob so that the white line is facing upwards. This will give you about 50% of the available current. Above the knobs which change the magnitude, which we call real, we have the imaginary component. This allows us to change the angular relationship between the current and voltage so that when we look at the phasor diagram we can create phasor diagrams that look like real situations. Over on this side we have some additional controls for current. Here we can induce current harmonics. We have one which we call the gain which is the amount of harmonic we have and then above that we have the phase shift. That's the difference between the angles of each of the harmonics. And on the last of the controls we have the unbalance. Here we can create unbalance between each of the phases. We can also do that by adjusting each of the magnitudes of, of each voltage on each phase, so A, B and C, so that we can create a situation where it appears we have unbalance. The controls for harmonics and unbalance should be set to the minimum to start off with, to get a clear picture when you first connect to the instrument. Above the controls we have the outputs of voltage. So we input a voltage like 120 or 230, and out of the terminals at the top we get something proportional depending upon exactly how we've set the controls. Over on this side we have the current loops. Here we get the output current which goes from around 1 amp to about 6 amps depending upon how we set the controls. You can thread the flexi through here or you can use a current clamp inside the loop to measure current. So now we're ready to connect up the demo box. First thing we should do is observe all the usual markings and make sure we connect up to the right channels. So we'll start by connecting the voltage leads. So the first lead that we'll connect will go to the A or L1 terminals. Then after that we'll go to the phase 2 or B. Next is phase 3 or C. Connect the PE to the jumper and then lastly the neutral and now we're ready to measure voltage we can now connect up for current you will use current clamps in this case observing the polarity which is indicated on the case so first of all we'll go to phase A making sure that that's snap shut then phase B or 2 Again, make sure that's tight and shut. Next is phase 3 or C. Once again, click to make sure we measure the right current. And then lastly, we'll connect to the neutral, pushing inside the ring. And then we're ready to make a measurement. Now we can start to see some of the measurements displayed from the simulator. Here we can see the phasor diagram. At the top of the screen we have the voltages which are set to around 230 volts in this case. Below we have the relationship shown between the voltage and current, that's the phase angle. We can adjust that phase angle using the imaginary setting on the simulator. So we can switch the direction of the phasors depending upon what we want to see. We can also adjust the magnitude of voltage and current and then the phasor lines appear longer or shorter depending upon exactly how we adjust those. We can also show other measurements on the instruments as well using the demo case 
Uh, here we see that we have 230 volts of three phase. We have uh, five amps or six amps of current on the other phases. We can change this current by putting a multiplier into the instrument if we wish so that we can multiply this by 10 or 100 to get something which looks like a more realistic value. And this screen shows us power. Here we have 1.36 kilowatts of power on phase A. Uh, this is simulated of course, so there's not really a total of 4 kilowatts uh, consumed by the demo case. That would be way too much. So the simulation allows us to show something which looks like a realistic situation. Uh, on the KVAR line we can see that we have a capacitive power factor. We can show that, we can change that power factor by using the imaginary component. So we take the phase as either plus or negative so that we get either an inductive or capacitive value. As always with any demo the best thing to do is prepare beforehand. So try th some things at uh, your home or office, uh, changing the settings with the instrument to show some obvious examples and measurements and think about what the customers wanting to see and uh, the kind of applications they have to show the overall capability of the instrument.